welcome, there's brief pause and there's time of reflection and devotion as I speak to you from the land for which the Nungawal people are the traditional custodians and first peoples and recognising that we are scattered across a nation and some of you indeed in other nations and that there are others who are the traditional custodians and first peoples. As we come today, I want to express our thoughts for all who are out there who perhaps at this time are frustrated because they are finding ourselves again in a, in a period of lockdown or restricted movement. For some, there might be disappointment over planned trips that have not been able to happen or just that sense of being overwhelmed by this ongoing pandemic. And I do pray that in this time, you may find a sense of grace and strength and peace as we go ahead. Yet last week as I came to you, we spoke about the story of the healing of two women and we spoke about how that speaks into our own life and that in Jesus there is that for us which is a fullness of life and a richness of life. This story of the two women and their healing is a story which is rich in meaning and understanding and can speak to us in different ways and different levels and so we're going to hear again about how it speaks of healing but in this case how it may speak to us regarding the healing of our nation and so we listen again to the story of the healing of Jairus's daughter and the woman with the bleeding. In chapter 5 verses 21 through to 43 when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came to see him. And when he saw him, he fell at Jesus' feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhaging for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes... I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt it in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. While he was still speaking, some people came to the leader and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make such commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means, little girl, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome 
with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Has it ever struck you as we hear this story that the woman with the hemorrhage had been suffering her hemorrhage for 12 years and that Jairus' daughter was 12 years old? The Gospel writer makes special point that we should know these facts. And it's important because these are facts which just aren't happenstance. They're not just coincidence. There are, the, through the stories, Jesus, and by giving these particular ages and particular periods of time, is wanting to make a point that the story does have meaning and implication that extends far beyond just that immediate story of the, the miracle of the healing of the woman with the bleeding and Jairus' daughter. That in fact, there's a story that also has significance for the nation of Israel and also the early church. 12 years suffering of hemorrhage, 12 years old, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. This is not funky happenstance. This is an almost sledgehammer approach to make sure that we get the point. The nation needs healing and to achieve that there are firstly issues that must be attended to. Yeah, Jairus was an important person in his community as the leader of the synagogue and it comes to pretty good common sense that it would be expected that someone like Jesus would make haste to come to uh, an urgent situation in Jairus' household to seek to come and bring some healing to the daughter who is sick. And so the fact that he pauses midway in this urgent mission to address the issue that someone has touched his clothes can seem quite strange. And yet Jesus taking time to care for this woman who had been exploited and who would have been very much marginalised and isolated in a community says something very important. Jesus was about the work of wanting to see reformation within the life of the nation of Israel, both its social and its religious life. There were, but he recognised there were issues at the heart of Israel's life that needed attention. Issues of people marginalised, exploited, displaced and disregarded. Issues of religion, which was about status and control rather than transformation of the heart and the genuine service of God and the people. Many people of Jesus' time wanted to see Israel restored to a greatness that it was deemed to have had in previous times. And many would have wanted to rush to easy solutions to achieve that making Israel great again. But Jesus saw that there were first issues at the heart of the nation that needed to be attended to. The poor, the poorly treated and the marginalised could not be brushed aside. They needed attention and these issues needed to be attended to well before the nation itself could be well. Now when I hear the story of the healing of these two women, I am put to mind of issues that are at the heart of our nation that we need to recognise and attend to, of the need still to recognise the story of the first peoples of this continent and to hear their ongoing cries for justice and just recognition and treatment. I think he think of the need to respond to compassion to the plight of those whose lives are so desperate in the situations that they're in that they will spend every cent they have and risk their very lives in search of places of shelter. I am put into mind of the need to celebrate our diverse cultures and languages and to care about those who struggle rather than penalise the poor so that we can pander to the rich. I am put to mind of the need to value and care for the natural environment, and the ecology, the creatures that we share this continent with, to care for our world in all its fullness rather than exploit and destroy for our own short-term gain. Yet 
I could go on. There are many issues that we could name here in the life of the nation. I could equally spend time naming issues that need to be recognised and addressed within the life of the church. And I could be very honest and recognise also that there are many issues within my own life that need to be attended to. For all of these, the message remains clear. There is no easy path to wholeness, but there is a path. It can be scary and it can be tough, but we are not alone in this journey. Where we would hurry on, Jesus causes us to pause because a need has touched his cloak. And as we stop with Jesus in our lives, in our church, in our nation, we find that grace is there to strengthen us, to bring healing and transformation. As we stop with Jesus, we find that even that which we thought was beyond any hope will be restored to life. Let's pray. Light of the nations, sight of the blinded, you are our freedom from every dark prison. In the moments of comfort, liberation, healing, hope and inspiration which touch our lives. In the compassionate impulse and the yearning for justice and peace which inspires us to action. In the faith that we have in you which shapes our lives and calls us to follow in your way. Shine your light on the world. Shine your light in and through us. And as you go into this week and all that it holds for you, go into the world to proclaim God's society of peace, to share God's simple blessings with others and to offer to all who struggle the love of God going to the world, taking the blessings of our God, creator, healer and comforter, everywhere you go. Amen. <laughs>